apartment now. Um, but with that, I'm just going to turn it over to Cheryl. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, Paul. So today's topic is mushrooms. So we're going to go ahead and I've got a PowerPoint presentation to share. And then we'll take a look at some documents and some recipes, some fun stuff to incorporate. So first off, let's take a look at the PowerPoint. Okay, can everybody see this? We can see it. Awesome, okay. Question, Cheryl. If anybody has any questions, feel free to respectfully um, unmute and ask Cheryl questions or put it in the chat and I'll feed it to her. Great. Okay, so to jump into today's topic, the power of mushroom supplements. So essentially, we're going to learn some of the ins and outs of some different mushrooms and how they can support your health goals. And you will truly see that um, whatever your health goal is, there is a mushroom supplement to help you with achieving that goal. And first, I want to give the disclaimer, though, that this class is not intended on diagnosing, treating, or mitigating any kind of disease or illness, and dietary supplements and foods can have interactions with prescription medications, so it's best to be informed of any potential interactions with anything that you may be taking. And at Natural grocers, our five founding principles are um, one, a focus on science-based nutrition education and supporting the community through um, education opportunities like today's class and partnerships like with the Coos Bay Library and providing the community um, some quality products at affordable pricing so that health and wellness can be attainable for everybody. And when we talk about mushrooms, mushrooms are definitely um, a unique category. So they actually um, are a kingdom of their own because they are different than animals, different than plants. They are unique from other things. They are also very versatile. We kind of um, mentioned that earlier before class. Um, so you can cook with them, you can supplement with them. And definitely, some of them are not edible, some of them are. So um, if you are doing any mushroom foraging, definitely make sure that you have a trustworthy um, person who is an expert in mushroom foraging before you go out there and pick on your own. And a little shout out to the um, South Slough is um, they sometimes have mushroom foraging um, experiences. Um, and so kind of keep your eyes open for those kind of opportunities in the community as well, if you want to kind of get your mushroom foraging on. Um, but definitely, and how they are unique from other um, categories or kingdoms, animals and plants, um, is that they, they lack that chlorophyll or pigment, that green pigment from plants um, that is going to be that energy source for the plant. So they actually manufacture energy in a very different way. So they don't require that sun exposure to be able to create that chlorophyll um, and support the um, growth of that plant. So they actually are going to utilize um, their root structures and kind of that um, nutrient exchange with other plants in their environment in that way in order to produce and attain their energy. And so they are a part of um, the, the kingdom of fungi, so all on their own. And they have a lot of overlapping benefits with, among the different mushrooms. So a lot of them are going to be supportive of overall um, health, immune system health, and particularly um, kind of that nervous system, brain health. But they're going to have also some of their own nuanced kind of special support for the body. So that will include things like immune system, 
blood sugar support, brain health, liver health, respiratory health, hormone balance and health, and even energy as well. So you can kind of utilize some of these to target your specific goals. You can even um, incorporate a few of them together to kind of um, have more of an overall approach as well. So in today's class, we're gonna kind of co cover um, a few different mushrooms and types of mushrooms and their specific um, benefits. And you can kind of decide what ones might be um, specifically supportive of your particular goals as well. And when we look at mushrooms and the structure of a mushroom, um, what we consider the mushroom, what we usually think of at, when we think of a mushroom is what we call the fruiting body. So everything from the ground up, that um, structure that has the stalk and then the cap. So that's usually what we think of when we think of mushroom. But we also have what is kind of that root structure underneath the ground, which we call mycelium. And that's actually where that nutrient exchange and transfer is happening. Now, the fruiting body and the mycelium are both going to have some benefits for health. And they, it may depend upon the type of mushroom or the different benefits. Um, whether you're using the fruiting body and or the mycelium to help support some of those benefits. Um, and one thing that is kind of pretty unique, so in the Pacific Northwest, we grow mushrooms really well, right? <laughs> so we do have places like the South Slough um, and a lot of people who like to do that foraging because we're just that ripe environment. But we also can boast that we actually have one of the largest living organisms on earth <laughs> in Eastern Oregon. Um, so it's a honey mushroom mycelium that spans about 2,400 acres. Um, and it's between, they consider it about 2,000 to 8,000 years old. So that's pretty amazing. So if you've even walked over land in Eastern Oregon, you could say you walked over um, likely that area where that largest living organism on earth is, which is really amazing that that mycelium, that part of those mushrooms that you don't see, it can spread and stretch over acres of land. And I, I find that pretty fascinating. And all of those root structures are kind of communicating with their environment and interacting with root structures from other plants to help um, with that nutrient exchange communication between those organisms as well. Cheryl, uh, Sarah asked how big was that honey mushroom again? Um, about 2,400 acres. I know, it's crazy. that's pretty, pretty crazy, right? Um, and that's just that one. I mean, if you think of all of the different uh, mushrooms and their mycelium and how they overlap, it's pretty amazing. It's like we're on a bed of mushroom mycelium practically everywhere we go, right? <laughs> Particularly in Oregon where we grow mushrooms really well, um, the Pacific Northwest for sure. And so um, today we're going to talk about a few different types of mushrooms. And here's kind of an image of some of the main ones that we're going to talk about um, and that have um, are pretty well known for some of their health um, support. Um, reishi, turkey tail, maitake, cordyceps, shiitake, lion's mane, chaga, and agaricon. So um, we will delve into a little bit more specifics on each of these mushrooms. We're going to start with reishi, and it's a pretty beautiful mushroom, and you can actually find reishi in Oregon. Um, it is usually pretty hard to um, kind of um, handle yourself because it's really thick and woody. So it's going to be hard to, hard to cut into 
kind of hard to um, handle yourself. So this is probably a good one to focus on supplements um, for um, that supportive benefits as well. But it's definitely has a long history of support and well known for um, supporting sleep, stress, as well as seasonal challenges. And its benefits come from the mycelia as well as the fruiting body, so the root structure and um, the cap and the stem. And what gives a lot of these mushrooms their health supportive benefits is um, some of those different plant-based compounds like their polysaccharides. And so um, reishi has at least 100 different polysaccharides and other plant-based um, nutrients that are gonna be supportive of its health benefits. And when we take a look at specifically reishi supporting that deep restful sleep, as well as um, supporting our ability to adapt, adapt to stress. And that doesn't have to be what we um, typically think of as stress, like that mental or psychological stress, but your body perceives stre all stressors the same way, whether it's stress that's physical stress, environmental stress, or maybe that psychological stress. So it's gonna help support your body's ability to, to adapt to all forms of those stressors. And we call a plant um, or herb that has some of those benefits, we call them adaptogens. So just like, like it sounds, it helps us to adapt. Um, and that's gonna overall support um, that overall wellness and sense of well-being as well. And then when we take a look at some of the specific um, support of reishi for seasonal challenges, particularly, um, anytime we have those season changes, our body has to adjust to things, it's gonna help that adaptation. And part of that's going to be in its support for um, immunity specifically and those immune um, challenges as well. And particularly in the lungs, it's going to be supportive. Um, also with our um, response to some of those seasonal challenges, including things like our um, histamine response. So supporting a healthy histamine response to those seasonal challenges as well and airborne irritant. So right now could be a really good time to maybe get some reishi on board for those seasonal changes and challenges. And then next, so we've got chaga, which is a pretty interesting one. So this picture of chaga on the lower left corner of the screen, it just looks like clumps, right? Like maybe little pieces of burnt wood. <laughs> But actually, chaga doesn't have a stem and a cap. It doesn't have a fruiting body. It's essentially just a hardened micell mycelial structure. So um, all of those supplements are going to be mycelia. And chaga has some particular support benefits for um, the digestive tract. Um, and when we support digestion, healthy detoxification, we're also going to be supporting other areas of our body that um, also are involved in that detoxification, and that includes our skin. So it's also then going to support um, that healthy um, skin as well. And it's interesting to know that chaga is actually um, one of the richest source of free radical scavenging compounds found in nature. So um, helping to support um, some of those challenges as well of oxidative stress um, that we experience. And so one of those densely packed full of um, some of that immune supportive benefit. 
And so particularly because chaga has what we call an affinity for um, some of those epithelial tissues, so that's where it likes to um, collect in our body. So things like our skin. So that's why it can have some particular benefits for the skin and other um, lining of the other tissues throughout the body, like um, the digestive tract as well. Um, and so support for that gut immunity and health for um, that bacterial balance within the gut as well. So Cheryl, on that previous slide, was that like the tea? Oh yeah, up in the right, right corner. So that's one of those four sigmatic, um, it's a, a powdered packet okay. that you can add to, I mean, you could drink it by itself. A lot of them are gonna have like a mint flavor to them, but they have a, a mushroom powder in there as well. And so, yes, that's gonna be a chaga a mushroom um, with a flavor of tea that you could either drink by itself or you could add it to another tea or other beverage. And I'm gonna show you too a recipe, a creative way that you can use some of these elixirs in um, cooking as well. Thank definitely you. pretty versatile definitely okay and then cordyceps so this one's a pretty unique mushroom in the fact that it is a parasitic mushroom so in nature i know kind of creepy <laughs> In nature it actually um is going to um take over hibernating caterpillars. So um, it starts to use the caterpillar um, as its energy to source to grow. And then it like basically kind of mummifies this caterpillar. Um, but no need to worry because um, supplements are not going to be this form of cordyceps. It wouldn't be um, a cost effective or efficient way of growing cordyceps. Um, it's typically only found like this in the high altitude areas. Um, and so what we're usually growing cordyceps on is going to be more of a grain type of um, uh, kind of foundational um, growth medium for sure. So any cordyceps you're going to find in supplements, um, it would probably be cost prohibitive to um, do cordyceps from uh, the caterpillars as well. Um, but cordyceps is specifically, especially known for its support for energy and stamina. So people who are um, exercising, athletes, um, and who just um, could use a little boost of energy support. Um, it actually does work within the body to um, help with uh, that production of our energy um, molecules in, in the body called ATP. So it's gonna help support that. Not only that, but it also is gonna help support that oxygenation um, in the body, which is gonna also support energy. Um, it's also going to support respiratory health because it's gonna help support that um, oxygenation and circulation within the body as well. So when you think cordyceps, think energy. And yes, that is why these um, cordyceps uh, images look like um, little caterpillars is because they essentially took over the caterpillar. And so because it can help support energy, it is known for being a fatigue fighter. And so um, for its oxygenation, support for respiratory function. Um, and so people who just need that little extra boost, um, support for immune system, um, and just kind of that overall resistance and resilience. And then lion's mane, it does look like how it sounds. It looks like a cascading mane of hair. 
And you can find lion's mane in Oregon as well. Um, and uh, you can sometimes find them in grocery stores also. Um, not as common, they're kind of uh, very light, very airy. So if you look at price tags that say like eight, eight bucks a pound or more a pound, right? Um, don't get too overwhelmed because they're very lightweight. They're kind of like sponges. Um, and so you almost can't, can't feel them in your hand, the weight in your hand. Um, but yeah, they're, they're delicious. They're kind of a light flavor. So if you're not particularly fond of a strong mushroomy flavor, this might be a nice one to start with. Um, but it is particularly known for its support for the brain and the nervous system. Just like the little um, kind of hairy um, look of this lion's mane kind of almost resembles kind of the connections in the nervous system, all the different um, nerves that are connecting and communicating with each other. It supports that communication within the body and within the nervous system. And that's gonna support overall um, cognition and nervous system health and its ability to function with um, clarity, focus, memory, and cognition for that overall brain health support. And we're getting benefits from both the mycelium and the fruiting body of the lion's mane. And it particularly is supportive of the structure of that nervous system as well as that communication and function of the nervous system. So it's gonna help support um, what we call nerve growth factor and brave brain derived neurotrophic factor. So things that are gonna be supportive of that growth of new nerves and the health and um, integrity of that nervous system so it can function appropriately, that communication and even that speed of communication because that lion's mane is also going to support um, what we call the outer portion of the nerves and that communication um, is going to be that myelin sheath. So the outer portion of the nerves and that is particularly responsible for the speed of communication. And so it's gonna support that so that um, the communication signals can be sent and received quickly as well as efficiently. And I find lines made to be like a really easy one to incorporate because it, it has that light flavor, um, really kind of almost creamy. And I'll, I'll, we'll talk about a way that we can incorporate that in, um, in our foods as well. But next is turkey tail. And essentially it, it looks like a turkey tail. It has those different beautiful colored ridges um, that kind of give it that look like that fan tail of a turkey. Um, it also is supportive of the immune system as well as digestion. And, and it makes sense that it supports both of those things because a lot of our immune system resides in the gut and it's going to support the gut, which is also going to support that immune system as well. And so part of how it's supporting the immune system is through some of its specific um, compounds, so beta glucans. So a lot of plants as well as mushrooms contain what, they, what we call beta glucans, those kind of cell wall structures, but each of these different plants or um, mushrooms may contain different types of beta glucans, which are gonna have unique um, benefits. And so the ones in turkey tail are particularly beneficial for um, supporting that immune system and helping that immune modulation so that we're responding um, in a healthy way to some of those um, challenges as well. 
And then maitake, or we may also know maitake as the hen of the woods. So this also is one of those that you can find at the grocery store. It's very light and delicate. So um, definitely um, like you could you peel back some of these different leaves off of it, maybe saute it into things. Um, but it's not real hardy, so it's going to fall apart readily. So handling delicately is the way to go. But it's going to be supportive of um, many of the things that are going to be supporting that healthy weight maintenance. Um, things like supporting blood sugar balance as well as healthy digestion. And one particular compound, particularly in maitake, is what they call um, the SX fraction, um, which was um, named according to um, syndrome X because it helps support many of the things related. So whether it's um, blood sugar balance, um, blood pressure, triglyceride support, healthy cholesterol, um, and that all is going to help support healthy weight maintenance as well. And then shiitake. So shiitake, particularly for liver support. And again, when we are supporting our liver, we're also going to support all the things that the liver does. And the liver does a lot of things. I'd say it's probably one of the most all encompassing organs in the body. So it does um, many things, including um, processing our um, carbohydrates, fats, um, our energy sources um, into energy or storing it. Um, it de helps with detoxification. Anything that is helping with detoxification is again going to help support overall health and the health of um, other detoxification organs because they don't have to pick up the slack then if the liver's doing what it needs to do we're going to have um, healthy skin we're going to have a healthy digestive tract we're going to have the healthy um, lipid levels because our Liver is what processes those fats um, within the body as well. So it's gonna support overall health. And then when we look at that support for the liver, again, shiitake has some particular um, beta glucans um, that are going to be particularly supportive of detoxification itself. Um, and that's going to support overall immunity, healthy circulation, that skin health, um, intestinal health, overall health as well. And particularly supporting that um, modulation of inflammation within the body. And then the last mushroom we were going to um, touch on is agaricon. So agaricon is a pretty amazing mushroom that can get really large. It can um, live to be about 75 years old. Um, and it has kind of a broad range of benefits. So, and specifically for the immune system, we take a look at um, how it's supporting particularly that microbial balance within um, the body. So whereas some of those other mushrooms are supporting kind of more of the immune system activation and modulation, it's supporting more specifically kind of that healthy microbial balance. And so we've got several mushrooms to choose from. So we talked about how reishi is supportive for kind of that adaptogenic um, support for um, adapting to stress and seasonal challenges. Turkey tail for immune system and digestion. That turkey tail has um, some particular 
fibers that are going to be supportive as um, what we call prebiotics. So beneficial fibers for the support of healthy microbial bacterial populations and support there. Um, we talked about maitake and its support for blood sugar balance as well as a healthy weight maintenance. And then our creepy mushroom cordyceps, which um, helps support energy and stamina. Shiitake that's supportive of liver health and everything that the liver does, including the healthy lipid levels. And then lion's mane with its support for overall mental health and nervous system health. And chaga, again, kind of a little overlapping benefits here for the gut as well as the liver and for on um, that skin health. And then a garicon for that healthy microbial balance. And so essentially, um, whatever your health goal is, mushroom supplements can definitely make it achievable from everything from like immune system health, blood sugar balance, nervous system health, and even healthy hair, skin, and nails, right? And energy. And we mentioned a couple books that um, Natural Groceries does carry. So Mycelium Running is the book by Paul Stamets, and he talks about how mushrooms can help save the world, <laughs> um, which is pretty amazing how um, just nature and all of the um, everything that is in an ecosystem works together um, for that balance within the ecosystem and then um, healing mushrooms the book from the founder of four sigmatic mushrooms which was the the company who makes those little mushroom packets um, and that one's called healing mushrooms and it's a practical uh, and culinary guide to using mushrooms for whole body health. So he's got some uh, mushroom recipes in there as well. And then the customer literature file um, from Natural Grocers, which was one of the documents that was sent to you um, through your um, email from Paul. And that one actually goes through some of the different um, mushrooms so that you can um, kind of look at the different types of mushrooms and what support they're gonna um, help provide you. So that's this document right here. And then um, the last page, so it talks in detail a little bit more about each specific mushroom and its support. If you want more details, the sciency version. And then on that very last page, kind of a long document, isn't it? Um, here, it kind of gives you what I would, I'd like to call your Cliff Notes version, kind of at a glance, what each of the different mushrooms, how they can support the body. Keeping in mind that um, there's a lot of overlapping benefits. So again, overall immune support, nervous system support, but then the nuanced like specific areas of support, the additional benefits of each of those mushrooms and which ones you might want to either um, individually focus on or mix and match to kind of serve your specific goals. And this is kind of that neat at a glance um, guide to um, everything, kind of those main mushrooms that you're going to find in supplements. And then I also put a link to, um, let's see, to some of those recipes. And this one's kind of a nice one if you want. Uh, a nice treat that isn't completely full of sugar and you can kind of um, change it to your um, flavors and tastes and things that you um, would like to put in there. So essentially it's like um, a chocolate truffle essentially with, with mushrooms in it. 
Um, and so you're using um, dark chocolate, coconut cream, and you can choose like a dark chocolate, lower sugar variety, or add in like, do you like a, even a baking chocolate, add in your own alternative sweetener. But then it gives you ideas for different things you can add in like turmeric, ginger, um, and this is where you can add in the Four Sigmatic um, packets of mushroom elixir. And they have everything from the reishi to chaga, lion's mane, and cordyceps, depending upon what you want to um, focus on. And they look just like this. So different elixir packets, like one serving packets, um, can use them in recipes like this, or you can take them alone um, in some hot water. And then we also have some mushroom supplement recipes. So you can pick this up in the store. It's uh, um, essentially four good for you coffee hacks. So different things you can add to your coffee. And then it lists um, things like um, cinnamon, nutmeg, cardamom, ginger, but then the Stamets seven mushroom powder. It's kind of just your overall daily immune support, um, seven different mushrooms. And that one includes things like your um, cordyceps, reishi, maitake, lion's mane, and chaga. So a lot of the mushrooms we talked about today. Um, there's also many other um, supplement powders that can be added to um, your coffee, other beverages, things like these truffles. Um, you could add them to soups or stews, um, nut butter ball type um, treats as well. Um, again, this has like chaga, maitake, reishi, agaricus, shiitake, turkey tail, cordyceps, and lion's mane. So like pretty much everything we talked about today, right? So you can get your all in one. Or one of my favorites is like we said, the lion's mane. Like even if I just choose just one mushroom that I could probably put in just about everything, that lion's mane um, really kind of blends in nicely to things. It has that nice creaminess. If you add it to your coffee, it'll add that light creamy um, flavor to it. But also some of my other favorite um, ways to get mushrooms in is by just like a little, like a liquid. So you could add a liquid to just about any anything that's liquid, um, juice, coffee, again, that like soups, stews. Um, and when you're talking about things like a liquid versus uh, a powder, so the powders are gonna have typically more of those um, prebiotics or fibers that are supportive of gut health, but liquids are more quickly taken up. So if you're wanting that quick absorption and support, then a liquid's a nice way to go for that. Uh, one really easy way to get mushrooms in is these nice little sprays. So they're immune support sprays, just kind of like that daily support. It's got a garicon, reishi, chaga, it's got birch in there, <laughs> and turkey tail. And my favorites are the the cinnamon and peppermint, and they're just a spray, you spray in your mouth. So I kind of treat them like a breath spray. And then I'm getting beneficial mushrooms on top of it. So it's like a dual purpose. Um, and really simple, easy way to just kind of keep in your car, keep in your bag or your pocket. They're super small, they're like half ounce. So really, really convenient. And of course, I would like to think everybody loves the taste of mushrooms, but I'm not sure everyone does. So for the people who don't like the taste of mushrooms, there are capsules um, that are available so you don't have to taste it. Um, we've got um, these mushrooms right here. We've got a turkey tail 
And then we've got the lion's mane, lion's mane right there. And these guys um, are on a really deep discount. And uh, today's the last day for the sale on um, the Turkey Tail and the Lion's Mane, the Natural Grocers brand. It's regularly $9.89. They're on sale for $7.49. And that's through today. Um, and so for attending today's class, I'm also going to give you a $5 coupon for your purchase. So now these coupons are good on any purchase and they're good for a couple weeks. And um, I just thought that if you wanted to take advantage of the, the sale today um, and you're an Empower member, um, the sale is good for Empower members. And if you're not an Empower member, we can help you sign up and become an Empower member to get that deal. Um, but if you use that coupon on the Empower sale, then essentially your, um, your little mushroom supplement would only be about $2.50. So it sounds like a really good opportunity to give something a try. And um, either of these- If you go be, today. <laughs> yes, today. You have to, yeah, if you want to take advantage of that opportunity today. But um, you'll still be able to get this coupon for two weeks. So then it'll still be good. And I just want everybody to know, I put it in chat earlier, but I took everybody's first name and first initial of their last name from your screen names. So that's all you'll need to give at uh, Natural Grocers to get your coupon. Yes, definitely. And we did cover quite a bit. Um, also, um, check our website at naturalgrocers.com forward slash recipe finder. Um, we've also got some other recipes in store um on mushrooms so that was a cream of mushroom soup and so it was actually a dairy free version with cashew so kind of a nice nice one for people who have um special needs um dietary restrictions um but there's a a, a lot of different ways you can add mushrooms either in cooking or supplementally there's going to be a mushroom for everybody and a mushroom for every goal um, so there's definitely ways to incorporate that and have fun with it. Um, even our typical butt mushrooms are going to be supportive of immune health and um, nervous system health. So your white button, your carminis, your portabellas, and those are ones that people are fairly familiar with incorporating. Um, so you can definitely even get benefits from um, just adding it in food eating um, mushrooms in general and then supplementing also. So, and if anybody has any questions, I can entertain some questions. Yeah, feel free to unmute if you wanna ask a question or if you feel more comfortable putting in chat, go for that, you can do it that way too. Oh, and I see you said that you have both of those books at the library. We do, yeah. Right? yeah. Okay, great, <laughs> nice, yes. yeah. So I think you can purchase them in natural grocers or check them out at the library. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Exactly. Yeah. So if you decide you want to do more, more experimenting with mushrooms and have it as a resource for sure. Awesome. Yeah. Well, if nobody else has a question, what would the health benefits of say like, uh, how do you pronounce it? Crimini? Crimini. Yeah. Crimini. What would the benefit yeah. of a crimini mushroom be? Yeah, so um, again, the immune support, nervous system support, per yeah, particularly the immune support. Um, and a lot of times um, they say like uh, uh, that mushrooms, in order to access some of those benefits, cooking the mushrooms, a lot of times you'll see, um, uh, or water extracts, that type of a thing, like making even making like a tea with the mushrooms. But you want to make sure that you, um, whatever it's cooked in, it's going to um, also contribute its benefits to that liquid in that liquid base of whatever you're cooking. So uh, making sure that you're you're retaining that. So if you're like cooking it in a soup or making a tea with it, um, you can get benefits from that too. Cool. Yeah. Is anybody? Yes, I do have a question, Sarah. 
Yes. Can all of these mushrooms be found in Oregon or just the ones that you mentioned? Um, no, not all of them. Um, I'm, you're not going to find the um, cordyceps. Those are typically in um, right high, high altitude, um, like the Himalayas. Um, I, oh, I forget where Chaga, I don't think, I don't think Chaga is available here. Um, but the lion's mane, I'm pretty sure turkey's, turkey tail reishi. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of what else, but, but yeah, I'm not, <laughs> you probably want to talk to the mushroom experts at the South Slough. <laughs> yeah. No problem. Oh, yeah, um, Mary said that was very informative. Yeah, thank you. Are the turkey tails, they look like the ones I see when I'm out hiking, growing off the sides of trees? Um, those could be a, a woodcock too, so it's yeah. kind of hard to know. I know there's I a lot that, of imposters and lookalikes. Yeah, with... <laughs> see, that's the thing, and I'm not, I'm not a mushroom foraging expert. I have to give that disclaimer, um, but um, I think my understanding is turkey tails are pretty uh kind of a little bit more delicate as opposed to like those wood conks you know oh. they're kind of thick and yeah so yeah thank you but yeah but yeah you'd have a lot of fun going mushroom foraging with the south slough if they do that again so we can we can all hope um that they'll be able to start up some of those programs again probably uh maybe hopefully we'll hope for this fall I, I thought they did one last fall, you know, during the season. I could be wrong. But uh, I, I, this, I, so the last couple of years, they hadn't been able to do it. I did go with them um, the probably the last time they had one, which was a couple of years ago. Okay. And it's kind of amazing because unless you're looking, you don't even know all the different things that are out there. You're just like, how did I not know like that there's this blue night mushroom that is not edible but like it's blue and then there's like these mushrooms that are not edible <laughs> that are like white but they like look like they have little blood oozy blood spots on them and you're just like holy cow like I know how did I know I live I've lived here almost all my life and how did I not know there's these crazy different mushrooms that are like hiding in the forest <laughs> and like because I just wasn't looking, I didn't know. Yeah. Well, sometimes they're like yeah. just a centimeter, centimeter underneath your foot feet, you know, in the ground. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, well, and they have like, um, what is it? I might not be saying this right, folates. So that's like the porcini mushrooms. And so they're pretty, um, pretty readily available here, I guess. Oh, okay. So yeah, porcini's is a kind of a common one that they use like in pasta sauces and oh okay yeah that sounds familiar there's definitely some overlapping benefits in general with mushrooms so you know trying the different mushrooms getting the overlapping benefits and then maybe specifically targeting areas that you want support for cool yeah. be fun anybody want to try some new recipes out maybe check and see what's available check that um four sigmatic book out, um, which has a few recipes. And then at Natural Grocers, you can get a few recipes, go on our website. And if you, um, and I'll, I can even, let's see, share my screen and then go to this website right here. So if I were to go to. And while Cheryl's doing that, I'll remind everybody, she does offer free health coaching if you need further uh, consultation on this stuff. Yes, thank you, Paul. Yeah, no, thank you gonna for providing that, that for the community. <laughs> are you going to um, put the put the link in the chat pane for signing up for a coaching session yeah, for me? Yeah, a couple times. Thank you. Yeah, it's in there a couple times. Yeah. So I just went to the naturalgrocers.com forward slash recipe dash finder. And then you, I just Carol, wait, did you mean to share your screen? Oh, am I not sharing? No, that's why I asked. <laughs> okay. Oh, here we go. There we go. Awesome. Okay. 
And so what, what you can see here is all sorts of stuff that they've used mushrooms in. So we've got the mushroom soup. There's even this mushroom lake tart, which is, um, looks really good. Um, and then this is the coffee hacks recipe. Uh, it, yeah, it goes well in almost anything roasted, right? Who doesn't like a stack of mushrooms on top of their burger, right? Or in uh, some kind of like meat um, skillet meal. Um, but yeah, there's three pages worth of um, mushroom related um, recipes. And some of these are actually even going to be kind of video style. So if I go back um, here, anything that has this little dot here is going to be a video on um, cooking that recipe as well. And if you wanted to, you could um, under uh, under recipe type, you could go video if you specifically want to look for ones that are going to kind of walk you through at least part of it. Um, they're kind of fun, so you could have your own little little cooking experience with your family or <laughs> or friends. Um, so that's definitely a fun way to try new recipes, try new things. Um, experiment. I might, I might a add bit. too, Cheryl, uh, just to make a shameless plug that. Um, for a monthly community cooking with a co-op um, class, which we have almost two years worth on the library's YouTube channel. Many of Jamar, our chef's recipes involve mushrooms. So you might want to take a look at those because they're yeah. just healthy recipes in, in addition to involving mushrooms. <laughs> definitely, definitely. That's another really awesome resource for the community for, um, and he's really patient. He, um, yeah, helps everybody and the development of their um, recipe, their food. So basically you're cooking with the co-op and then you have dinner at the end yes. of the day. <laughs> so it's a lot of fun. The nice end of the event, you get to eat and enjoy yeah, your work. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, share share your creations and you know everybody's turns out slightly different or you make your own substitutions to kind of meet your needs, but it's a lot of fun. Thanks, Kristen. Cool. Thank you so much, Cheryl. It's been Thank really you. informative. I'm looking forward to trying some of the ones for uh, my brain and stress. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Adaptogens. Who doesn't need that, right? <laughs> Brenda said, "Thank you." Energy and adaptogens. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Anybody else have any questions before we sign off? Awesome. Well, thank you all for coming. And like I said, just give um, Natural Grocers your uh, first name and first initial of your last name for your $5 off coupons. And if you want to take advantage of that sale today, you might want to go see Cheryl before um, five today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sounds good. Thanks, Cheryl. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. This has yeah. been fun. Yeah. Thanks all. Take care, everybody. Stop the recording.